Well, having shown the basics of double entry bookkeeping in the previous very short video, now let's do a slightly longer video showing how the government finances, how the government finances work. Okay, so let's go to the godly table up here, bring one down, right click, and I'm going to put it in editor mode to start with, just to make it visible to see this stuff on screen as I, as I build it, and call this the banking sector. Save that and now bring up its godly table so I can edit nice and easily in a larger window. Drag it out a bit. I'm going to start at the very simplest level. Banks have deposits, which are the, their liability and the asset of the non bank private sector. We have the bank's equity over here. And now I'm going to ignore the initial conditions because I only need to worry about that if I'm doing a simulation. I'll bring that in later. And now we're going to have government spending. And government spends by putting money in your bank accounts. That's, uh, you don't get cash from the government anymore. You might have got that in the 19th century. What they do is they spend into your bank accounts. So government spending increases the amount of money in the, banking, the bank accounts of the non-bank private sector. And taxation does the opposite. So I'm going to have taxation here. And that's uh, going to be minus tax there. Now, that's the initial entries. I haven't included the double entry bookkeeping yet. How do I need to show that? There are many, there are ways that I could show this is coming out of another bank account of the private sector, but we know that this money actually is transferred into, the, it, the, into reserves uh, by government spending initially. So I'm going to have reserves here, which are an asset of the banking sector, and they are the equivalent to the bank accounts the banking sector has at the central bank. So spending, as well as increasing deposits, also increases reserves, bank reserves, and taxation, as well as reducing deposits, also reduces reserves. So there we have the basics of government spending. Not looking at how it's financed yet, that is simply what happens, the physical facts of government spending and government taxation. Now, that obviously has impact on the private sector because we've increased the deposits of the private sector while they're a liability of the banking sector, they're an asset of the non-bank sector. So I'm going to call this a private sector, implicitly meaning private non-bank sector. And put it in editor mode and bring up its godly table. And this is where Minsky is far, uh, Minsky stroke rabble is far more powerful than trying to do this using uh, tables in Excel or Word or whatever else because when you're doing that you have to remember the accounting. Ravel is based on the accounting so since I've created deposits as the liability of the banking sector it knows that there, this must be an asset for some other entity and this is what these wedges are about in the in the godly table windows. If I click on the down arrow next under the asset heading that is going to look for liabilities that haven't yet been allocated as an asset for other entity. Of course, in the case, that's going to bring up deposits. So I click on that, and those operations are brought across into that particular table. I haven't got any unallocated. I've got reserves as an asset, but I know reserves aren't an asset of the. Of the uh, at least I'll show, you, I'll show you that. I could make a mistake and put reserves here as an asset of the non bank public, but they're not. They're an asset of the central bank. So I've got nothing to put there. Now I have the private sector's equity, private sector's net worth. And that's the, that's the start of it. So how do I balance this row? Well, the obvious thing, if the amount of money in your bank account goes up, your net worth has increased. Whatever that means, inflation or everything else that you'll get other people um, waving their hands about when you talk about government spending. Technically and practically and realistically, government spending increases the amount of money in your bank account. That for, therefore increases your net worth. So if I type spend underscore G here, that now balances that particular row. So government spending increases the net worth of the non-bank public, uh, pri private sector, and taxation reduces it. And that is simply the mechanics of what's going on with government, government spending and government taxation. Now, at this point, you might think you can stop here. Well, you really can't for a complete system because I've now got deposits shown twice as both an as a liability and an asset, but I've only got reserves shown once. And that's why now I've got to go for a, an extra table to bring the table in. And this is the table for the central bank.
put that in editor mode as well bring up its table and while reserves were a asset of the banking sector they are a liability of the central bank so I click here and those operations are brought across I haven't yet got any other assets to talk about I'll bring those days will turn up later so I now have the central bank I'll call it CB subscript E for equity and uh, can I show it at that level? Well, I could arguably, there is a, tr tr a, a tr tradition in modern monetary theory to aggregate the central bank and the government at one, but you don't need to. You can be more realistic because we know that as well as having uh, reserves as, as, a, as a liability, which are basically the bank accounts of the private banks, that the central bank that they use for settlement funds, uh, they, or there's also the treasury has accounts there and the general title for the entire collection of them is Consolidated Revenue Fund. So I'm going to use initial CRF here under Treasury. And what we then find is spending takes money out of the CRF and taxation puts funds into the CRF. So now I've now got uh, three, three godly tables, but that's not enough still. Let's just look at down here on the table here. Ah, little, you can see little... Uh, arrows on the edge let you re re resize things. So I've now got Treasury CRF shown as a liability. Of course, I've got to show it as an asset as well. So another godly table, uh, title this one Treasury. Put that in editor mode. Bring up its godly table. And now, since we have the Treasury CRF as a, as a liability of the central bank here, I know that if I click on the down arrow here, it's going to show me there's only one liability that hasn't yet been shown as an asset for another entity. Bring that across, we now have the Treasury's assets here. I haven't got any liabilities for the Treasury yet, but I now have to look at its equity. So we now have the Treasury's equity or net worth. And this is net worth in financial terms. Uh, we, we can model non-financial assets with, with, uh, with Ravel. I'll show that much, much later. Uh, but fundamentally, the, tre and those, the, 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 the non-financial assets of the government are huge. So what I'm going to be showing is its financial situation, and that's going to be in the, in the negative uh, if government spending exceeds taxation. So spending reduces the equity of the government sector, and taxation increases the equity of the banking sector and this is where a lot of people uh, immediately resile when they hear this is the way things work they think that's terrible the government shouldn't be in negative equity but this is one of the most important points that modern monetary theory makes as Stephanie Kelton puts it in the uh, the deficit myth their red ink is our black ink so if you have here that the government is spending more than it gets back in taxation that is putting it into negative equity what happens for the private sector the exact opposite Government spending and excessive taxation increases the equity of the uh, private sector. So the only way the government could get into positive equity would be if it drove the private sector into negative equity. Doesn't sound so good, does it? So this is the essential thing. The, you can regard th this as a seesaw. Okay? If the government spending, the government equity goes down, the private sector's equity goes up. That's absolutely necess a necessity of the accounting of the situation. And what modern monetary theory is saying, get the accounting right and then see what it says you could do about government spending and government taxation and government bonds, which I'll get onto in the next video.